Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to cover update 8 for Sons of the Forest. Now the quality of this video is going to be a bit less than usual because I'm in Norway right now, which is pretty much on the other side of the planet of Australia. I'm on the first holiday I've had in about 10 years. It's interesting. Now this update is one of the best ones they've released so far. I'm going to save the spoilers for the end, there's not many, and I'm going to cover it what I think is best to worst. The first change is that there will now be less frequently enemy raids depending on how many regulars or creepies have been dispatched. This change is probably the best change in the whole patch. I don't know if you've watched much of my content, but you'll see that I get angry a lot with the sheer amount of enemies that just happen to be in this game. It is stupid. Hopefully it's being fixed. They said a couple of things I want to mention. There will now be less frequent enemy raids depending on how many regulars or creepies you have dispatched. This amount will increase over the days unless you kill more enemies. We made a change to enemy balance. Now killing lots of enemies will lower the amount of raids you see. Let us know how these changes feel in the comments. So they do want feedback on this one to see if they've overdone it. But this is brilliant. I'm glad they're finally addressing this because this was a major problem for the game. The next change I think is absolutely brilliant is that they've reduced the health of the special glowing puffies. I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but those ones tend to take a lot to take down. And if you're using a bow and arrow, you'll turn them into a pin cushion and they still won't go down. They are insanely overpowered. So it's good to see that they've toned it down a little bit. I've had a few encounters of this in videos that I'm not too proud of. They've caused me to rage quite a bit. They were way too strong. Now the next thing they've added is the Armsy from the forest. Now this one isn't much of a spoiler, but they did say it will start to spawn after you finish the game. Originally, when I did a Q&A with them, they said that they wouldn't be adding any enemies from the original game, but upon release, the game did have mutant babies, and now they've added the Armsy. I think this is a brilliant move. The new mutants that they came up with weren't gargantuan, they were kind of just the same size as humans. So they didn't really feel that scary, I don't think. The arms is huge though. In the forest, he did mess up your base and he probably will mess up your base in this one. Now to give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the two between the forest and this one, they've added some new animations and things for them, but I think they have copied a bit and I honestly don't give a crap in the slightest. It's good to have more stuff from the original game. It made no sense to get rid of it. A few changes is that on the end of Tilvert's arms, it's actually got a barb spike, like a needle spike thing. The original one didn't have that. And just a couple of other things. It's got 400 hit points, which means that it's significantly tougher than Twins and Fingers. Fingers, I think, is 150, and Twins is 200. He's going to be hard to take down. I think I've found that a lot of the enemies felt too similar. Aside from John 2, that thing can go to hell. The worm. The next addition is that they've added a Hokey Pokey trap. Now, for those who don't know, Hokey Pokey is actually an ice cream flavor that was originated in New Zealand. It is very tasty. Now, this trap is pretty much identical to the original trap that they had in the forest, which was called the Rope Swing Trap. Unfortunately for the Rope Swing Trap, that was a piece of crap because it only attached to a tree and armsies and stuff would just come along and knock it down. But this one's freestanding. Now, this won't trigger by you, Calvin, or Virginia, or animals, I don't think. It can only be triggered by enemies. And you can jump into it. And if you build it on a hill where its elevation is affected, you can walk into it or slide into it like I did here. I thought it was funny to do that. One of the enemies I wanted to test it on the most was John 2, the worm, because he seems to dodge just about every trap in the game. And he does dodge it. He doesn't trigger it. However, if he does hit the spiky ball, he does take damage. And I was able to kill him with that. And when this thing falls, it sits there swinging for some time and if you do run into it you will take damage it will knock off two mutant armor if you get hit that's how much damage it does whatever that's worth about 70 health i think but enemies can trip it and not get hit that's a problem with it so it reminds me a bit of the deadfall trap so fortunately they can walk back around and get triggered by it since they like jumping up on stones it might be a good idea to place one so the ball sits on top of the stone they'll jump up on the stone and get hit by it without triggering the trap might be a good idea. Might break the game though. From what I can tell, this trap is going to need a lot of strategy. I'm aware it should be placed and that sort of thing. Maybe in a narrow hallway, so when it gets triggered, it'll go backwards and forwards. Like I do on my little spike trap thing that I do. I don't know, the Tunnel of Death, or I never came up with a name for it. But yeah, I like the look of this one. I think this one has a lot of potential. I'm looking forward to seeing what it can do. But not just for when it's triggered, just having it sit there and then walking into it on an elevation. That's going to be interesting. The next change is a really good one, is that defensive walls now take four times as much damage. They probably needed to do this because what happened with stone walls is that they absolutely killed them in terms of durability. Defensive walls have been crap in this game. They just get easily knocked down by those red dudes. So this is an excellent change. If they're all joined together, you should get 1200 hit points. It used to be 300. It was terrible. 
The next change is probably what sounds exciting, but it actually turns out not to be so much, is electric fences. Now these are made using a normal stick fence and then attaching a wire to it and then using the new freeform system of the wire thing. I'll get to that shortly. If you're gonna do this, build your fence, reinforce it with the stones at the bottom, otherwise it'll just get knocked over easily. And then you've got to attach the wire to a solar panel and yeah, it damages them. Unfortunately, they can just jump straight over the top of it. So they'll get hit once or maybe twice and then jump over it. Where it might be interesting is if they don't attack it. I think that might be good. Though if you've got multiple layers, that's also another interesting thing to see what will happen. Though I might be underestimating it. I think I might be, but from what I can tell, because they can jump over it so easily. Hmm. Unless you put spikes behind it, so it will stop them from jumping. i got no idea. It's worth investigating. It just didn't seem to get me interested like the Hokey Pokey trap. The next addition was mentioned before that there's free form electric wire placement added. What that means is that you can place it from pillar to pillar. I don't know what the range is, it's pretty long, but uh, it works just like the forest. It, had, uh, it gave me some flashbacks of the good old days of how building was. How much uh, more simple things were in a brighter time, I guess. It's gonna make it less painful to work with, but wire isn't that hard to come by. The next addition is that GPS locators can now be 3D printed and crafted in the inventory. Now this is quite tricky to figure out because there's no instructions for how to make it in the inventory. If you put your cursor over the cogwheel, it doesn't show anything, but you can now craft GPS locators because before you just had to glitch them, hope they respawn, but then they didn't. So they only cost 75 to print and the ingredients are wire, circuit board, battery, and the GPS locator frame thing. And the animation for it isn't quite there. He just mixes his hands together <laughs> and he's got a GPS locator. I like how they've done this one. I knew the 3D printer was really gonna pay off and I think it's going to more so in the future. The next change is that window shutters are now animated when closing or opening. Before it was just instant, now they actually move and they have a sound effect too, which is kind of cool. Hopefully next they'll allow us to make hinges so it's more realistic. So they're not just floating in the air, you know? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to say any more about that one. They've improved the putter hitting a golf ball animation. Before it hit the dirt, it was quite terrible. Now you can actually properly play golf. Unfortunately, there's no actual holes in the game. So if you're playing with a friend, you just have to trust each other to do the right thing. Also, throwing golf balls on the ground can easily glitch underneath the ground. This game does have a serious problem with things meshing underneath the ground. I'm hoping they fix it soon. The next change is that the golf cart can now seat up to four players in multiplayer. Unfortunately, you can't get Calvin or Virginia on these things. Maybe in the future they might. You might be able to tell them to go there. But yeah, they changed the design of it too. It used to have a tray on the back. Now it's got seats. I was kind of hoping that maybe we could get a storage on it. But, you know, that might be a bit too glitchy. Just thinking about how many less bugs this game has over the forest is quite crazy <laughs> with stuff like this. They also added lights to the golf cart. They're headlights and they're pretty piss poor. I found it better just to use an NVIDIA Shadow Play filter. Press Alt F3 if you've got Shadow Play in the game, and you can add some of your own. You see much better. The lights just don't go far enough. You can't see crap. When you get out of the golf cart, it takes like three seconds for the lights to go off. The next thing is that Angry Moose now sometimes kick a nearby player. Angry Moose just means you piss them off somehow, so like hitting them, that will certainly piss them off. So like walking up with a stick, but that, that won't kill them, but it'll piss them off. I don't know how much damage it did. I had God mode on when I tested it. I think in real life it would probably kill you, but yeah. The next change is that you can now carry and play radios. Those are those stereo things that you can find around. I can't store them though, and I haven't looked into it, but they play all the music. I hope they can make a structure in the game that you can just place it on there and you can turn it on and off give you more options of what to do with the soundtrack and that so you can replay songs and that because it's got some decent music in the game also just so you know all the music in the game is owned by air knight and it sits in your inventory right at the top left the next change is that rocks and stones now have collision in the log sled which means if you run into them you're actually going to get moved by the cart you won't just glide through them which is obviously more realistic i did some tests with the rocks and the stones to see if you could actually hit them and push them inside the cart it doesn't work that way i even checked it again with having a stone or a rock in there and then running over it they don't hop in so you can't glitch it and just kind of drive through and pick things up instantly you still got to work for it 
Now this is just a floating climbing bug I found and I don't know if it was in the game beforehand but I don't think it was. If you're climbing the steep log with a bow you get glitched and you start flying. I don't know what it's about. I don't know if it was a cause of the recent patch. I've got no idea. Just something I thought I'd mention. Could be handy to know climbing up steep surfaces with a bow you might have some problems because it doesn't affect going freehand. The next change is that they've added a reduced ammo difficulty level option. I don't know if you should use this. There's already not much ammo in the game. There is so little that I found myself just not using the shotgun or pistol that much. I think it's on by default in hard survival. The next one is that animal heads can now be shaken when held. You just press the left click button and it shakes them. I don't know what this is about. You can do it with all the other heads, like skulls and human heads or whatever. It's a thing. It might have an effect on enemies, I'm not sure. The next thing is that turtles can now be electrocuted. I <laughs> like how they add in the essentials to the game. But yeah, do this get stunned? I don't know what that means, but it works better with a taser over a button. Button didn't seem to work too well. I also spawned 100 turtle eggs and waited there for like 10 minutes. Stare at them, see if they'd hatch. They didn't hatch. The next change is that Kelvin will now visually refuse an order that requires trees if none are near. So he'll just shake your head and tell you no. Now this next change I couldn't get to work, but Virginia and Calvin can now swim if they end up in deep enough water. I thought this meant that they would follow you instead of walking the long way around, but it's not. They just run all the way around still. So maybe if they end up in the water, that's when they'll swim out. How do you get them in there? Probably just removing buildings from underneath them if they're out on a bridge or something. So either this isn't working as they said, or maybe I misinterpreted it. Most likely I've misinterpreted it. It's unfortunate because sometimes they will take the long way around, and I mean the long way. They'll be gone a long time. I also recommend watching another YouTuber's video named Just Rob. He's a smaller YouTuber and he covered some stuff that was pretty good that I didn't cover. Compliments my video quite well. And he's also got a different take on that update. He is not a fan of it compared to me. The link is in the description. Now here's the rest of the patch notes while I read off a few that I thought were important. And just before the spoilers of course because save them for the end so you can quit the video if you're not interested in seeing them. Now a lot of these updates that I haven't mentioned are optimizations, especially on LODs, which is a level of detail. So the game should be running a lot better for a lot of people, which is very good, especially in 4K. This game can really smash a 3080, bend it over and make it. But the ones I want to mention is that it is now possible to place a beam on the forward end between two beams supported by struts. The reason I mention that is just because it's so difficult to understand what the building changes are. I find it comical. I've got no idea what that means. The next one is fixed cutting pillar into a defensive wall spike, not checking if it is supported by a screw structure which would destroy it when applied that doesn't mean much but the reason i mention it is screw it's capitalized now i asked and not what screw meant and it's just their word for blueprint so whenever you see screw in the updates or patch notes they're just talking blueprint it's their acronym i don't know what it actually means the next one is we've also done a pass on optimization and brought down memory usage which would help cases of the game crashing. I think this coincides with what I said before with the optimizations and the LODs and stuff like that. The last one I want to mention is fix some bugs that could cause too many or too few enemy search parties on loading or restarting a game. Yeah, I have noticed this. This was a pretty big one, but I thought it was relevant to the original one, which was less frequent raids, but I guess we'll find out. Now for your five second warning until I get in the spoilers, eh? Now there's only two, and one is that they've added vocal announcements to some of the bunkers. They're gonna let a couple play just to show you what they are. Yeah, I guess it adds some emotion and that sort of stuff. Can I celebrate the next phase shift in the dining room tonight at 9 p.m. as we count down to the next era? And finally, the last one before I leave you, because I'm going to end the video on this one. They've added another new found footage video. Now, this is found in a luxury bunker and this file name is called estate agent so a real estate agent someone who sells property this was sent to me by only reformer so big thanks to them for sending this so we can watch it in proper quality it's spoken in chinese with subtitles over it it actually shows that way in the video so here it is and if you like this video make sure you like and subscribe cheers <laughs> Dan